Hello to everybody and thank you so much for joining us this afternoon for an introduction to Foundation Directory Online. We're a small group, so um, you know, feel free to ask as many questions as you like. Um, I do have some handouts prepared for you. We have a very extensive uh, PowerPoint slide deck to get through, but I'll also try to do a live demo. Um, and, you know, again, thank you so much, Stacey Varner and the team at the uh, Parkersburg and Wood County uh, Public Library in West Virginia for hosting Candid's Funding Information Network collection in your library. And thank you so much to Dr. Elliott and the team at the Marietta College in Ohio for um, helping to bring us all together this afternoon. These are really some very unique databases that Candid produces. And they are designed to provide you with a much uh, better understanding of philanthropy and grants, as well as you know, uh, getting getting a good command of um, how to fundraise for your nonprofit organization. So, um, without further ado, let me just check the chat. Thank you so much, Amy. And I'm going to start sharing my uh, slides. Okay, good. We should all be looking at uh, a bright yellow slide that says Introduction to Foundation Directory Online. Um, if at any point during today's presentation, um, you don't see what Susan is talking about, somebody please unmute yourself and certainly let me know. All right, so again, this program is being uh, brought to you by the Parkersburg and Wood County Public Library, uh, working in collaboration with the team at Marietta College, the nonprofit leads uh, uh, unit. We have 90 minutes with each other to talk about uh, this uh, comprehensive fundraising database Hold on. We are having foundation directory online. You will get a copy of handouts as well as the slide decks today. If you need to contact Dr. Elliott or Stacy Varner, um, you can see their um, addresses are on the screen in front of you. And my name is Susan Roma. I am representing Andrew, uh, this afternoon, uh, where currently I am the network engagement manager for the Northeastern United States. Feel free as well to, um, you know, contact me later this summer if you have questions about anything that Candid does or specific questions about the database tools. All right, so um, I'm hoping everybody has had a chance if you're coming in from West Virginia uh, to visit the Parkersburg and Wood County Public Library. Um, the, this library system has a very unique relationship with Candid and we are absolutely honored and thrilled to be working with the team at the Parkersburg and Wood County Public Library system. Um, the Emerson branch of this library system works directly with Candid. They are members of our Funding Information Network program. This is a program we've run for over 60 years where we work with um, public libraries, community foundations, nonprofit resource centers uh, throughout the United States and some globally. We are working with these organizations to promote a conversation about philanthropy at a uh, on the ground level in your community. And the most important thing about this relationship is that we work closely with the uh, libraries and community foundations and nonprofit resource centers to make available free of charge in their communities. We work with these teams on getting our database products, which are subscription-based, they're fee-based, out to local communities. And we hope that uh, by providing the local social sector with a wonderful tool to use to identify uh, foundation prospects and corporate prospects, we hope that um, we can support you in your fundraising efforts. So on the Parkersburg and Wood County Public Library's website, you'll see there's a URL up there. You'll see there's a very unique area of the website where the library system talks about their relationship with Candid. Just gonna scroll to the next page and I highly recommend um, at one point this summer, you do take a look at um, the library's website because they do a great job listing all of the free resources that they are making available to West Virginia. So 
On this particular slide, it does highlight the databases that we are talking about today. And I really should call these databases research tools. They should also be called database applications because they do come with bells and whistles and you can do some uh, really nifty things working with these database products. Um, for the context of our class today, which is called Introduction to Foundation Directory Online, we're gonna focus on the Foundation Directory Online suite of database tools. So the library system in West Virginia, Parkersburg area, does make available to its local community a free 24-hour um, day pass to part of our database known as Foundation Directory Online Essential. So um, this was a great service that the library system offered to West Virginia beginning last March when the global pandemic started. And they are continuing to offer this remote access tool to the end of this year. Now, the library is open. Yeah, wonderful. You can visit the Emerson branch of the Parkersburg and Wood uh, County Public Library. You can visit the library and have access to uh, absolutely the most comprehensive funding database in the world, which is known as Foundation Directory Online Essential. Now, I'm very, very happy to report that the professional level of access to Foundation Directory is now up to over 238,000 active grant makers, both here, based here in America and abroad. So the professional level tool will work exceptionally well for you if you are looking to research the grants that foundations pay out both here in America and abroad. If you're working on a corporate philanthropy project, I would highly recommend a visit to the Parkersburg and Wood County Public Library, uh, the Emerson branch, so that you can use the professional level edition of Foundation Directory to identify corporate funders. And for those of you who are already in the fundraising field, you probably know about donor advised funds. They are among the fastest giving vehicles in, uh, in America today. The Foundation Directory Online Professional product does an exceptional job helping you identify which nonprofits in your community are receiving donor advised funds. Now, um, the Emerson branch of the Parkersburg Wood and uh, County Public Library has a much smaller database with a very unique function. And the name of that database is called uh, Foundation Grants to Individuals Online. And again, you have to be inside the library to access this database. The Grants to Individuals Online database um, is a unique tool. It has 10,000 grant makers in it. And these are the 10,000 American foundations who uh, consistently will cut their grant checks directly to um, us as individuals. So the user base for Grants to Individuals Online is normally students looking for scholarships, whether or not you're at the high school level or the college level. Um, sometimes social workers use Grants to Individuals Online because social workers may have to identify uh, charitable grants for their clients. And definitely, if you are an artist, filmmaker, writer, journalist, even professors use grants to individuals online occasionally um, to find uh, grant support for research projects. So, um, you know, again, there are two wonderful databases inside of the Emerson branch of the Parkersburg and Wood County Public Library System. And we wanna really thank this library system as well for uh, providing um, day passes. These are called 24 hour day passes to the Foundation Directory Essential Database. So that's like three databases right there. And this is really a wonderful opportunity uh, for you from home. And actually, you know, it's well worth a trip to the public library to work with the higher level uh, versions of Foundation Directory Online. So um, that is what this class is all about. And um, if you're not familiar with the work of Marietta College's nonprofits lead, program, please take a moment or two this summer to check them out. Um, this is a really, really important program. I love the vision. The vision of nonprofit lead at Marietta College in Ohio is for every nonprofit to have the tools, resources, knowledge, and support they need to meet the needs of their community. And this is actually what is bringing us all together today. 
really easy to see how the public library and the uh, Marietta College nonprofits lead program kind of comes together to promote philanthropy on the ground in uh, West Virginia, as well as Ohio. Now, if I have uh, anybody on the call today who is not from Ohio or West Virginia, Candid has uh, nearly 400 libraries, community foundations, and nonprofit resource centers, including United Ways, that work with us primarily here in America. But uh, we have nearly 400 partners throughout the US. So you can use the link on the screen in front of you, candid.org backslash find us to identify a funding information network partner closest to you. In the example I have on the screen in front of you, in this case, uh, Oh, somebody was looking for a uh, library in Brooklyn who provided free access to Candid's funding databases. So they typed in Brooklyn, New York, a little map will open up on your uh, screen at home. And then if you further click these um, uh, blue circles, you will then get the contact information, address, website, uh, library hours of operation for those FIN partners closest to you. So. Um, you know, again, we're really talking about West Virginia and Ohio today, but um, this link can get you to Candid's funding information network partners throughout the United States. Candid has many, many websites that we create. This is a screenshot of Candid.org, which is our main website. It is your portal to all things Candid. So, um, you know, our tagline, Candid, gets you the information you need to do good. And again, this is why we're spending 90 minutes this afternoon together as a group to talk about how to um, find out what you need to do good in the world today. And in, in the context today, we're talking about fun, boosting your fundraising capability and to find the grants to keep your nonprofits going. Now, we may have worked with you in the past. Candid has um, a very long history in America. We may have worked with some of you in the past when we were foundation center. So, um, you know, we're, we're still a new nonprofit organization. In February of 2019, Foundation Center and GuideStar joined forces to become Candid, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. When we merged uh, together, both of our nonprofits brought a combined 88 years of expertise and literally millions of data points to the work of Candid. And yeah, we absolutely believe as one organization, we can serve your needs better. One of the environmental factors that, um, that kind of uh, led us to this merger is that you simply put, every year, millions of nonprofits spend trillions of dollars all around the world. Candid finds out where the money comes from, where it goes, and why it matters. When you use our data tools, please think of them as a data tools that are the most comprehensive in the world when it comes to helping you find information out about nonprofits, private foundations, and the grants that private foundations make uh, to nonprofit organizations as well as other types of recipients. So we accomplish our mission through research in the field of philanthropy, through collaboration and partnerships. So I did mention the Funding Information Network Partnership Program. That is an example of one type of partnership that Candid has um, with the local community. And training. This is an example of a free training class that takes place in many of our funding information network partners. Candid connects people who want to change the world to the resources you need to do it. Um, and, you know, it's, it's uh, pretty obvious why we're working with Marietta College Nonprofit Lead and the Parkersburg and Wood County Public Library System today, because all three of our organizations, um, you know, are kind of set up to support the nonprofit sector and provide you with the resources and training, the resources and education you need to do a better job. They get at the bottom of the screen, candid.org, C-A-N-D-I-D dot O-R-G, is Candid's main website. It is your portal to all things Candid. When you think of our work these days, think of us as a digital organization. We can move fairly quickly um, as an organization to craft and create a picture of philanthropy's responses to global events. So, um, you know, back in March of 2020, 
uh, when the COVID pandemic started, uh, we very quickly put together a COVID-19 pop-up page, which, which still exists today, and it is heavily used by the public. This COVID-19 pop-up page provides you with access to 2020 and 2021 grants data on philanthropy's response to the COVID-19 environment. It's got its own unique news feed that covers philanthropy's response to the COVID-19 environment. And it's got some nifty research tools that um, students and fundraisers will find very, very unique. There is a tool on the COVID-19 pop-up page that actually allows you to go in by country, within country, by state or region. And then you can identify the COVID-19 relief funds that have uh, been created in your own um, geographic area. It also has a data visualization tool on it called Foundation Maps. This is a version of one of our premier database products that allows you to create maps of the area that you're researching. And in the COVID-19 pop-up pages version of Foundation Maps, the maps that you create can be of city, towns, villages, counties, regions of the world, but you can create those maps and then see which nonprofits are receiving COVID-19 relief funding in your area. You, of course, will be able to see which um, foundations, grant makers, have paid out those grants so that a trip to the COVID-19 pop-up page is definitely a really good thing. Um, a lot of advice I hear from other fundraisers and nonprofit executives and managers is that um, they use newsletters. They sign up for free newsletters as a way to stay in touch with um, research organizations that they're interested in um, you know, looking at the resources at a later point. So you do have a QR code on the screen in front of you. And this is a QR code to our Candid Learning Newsletter, which is uh, actually one of the ways that I stay in touch with many of the classes and special events that Candid rolls out uh, throughout the year. So please feel free to follow Candid on social media, engage with us on social media, and do, um, you know, before the end of the summer, make it a point to sign up for one of our many free newsletters. Um, we also make it very easy for you to unsubscribe to our newsletters. Just look at the bottom of the page and click unsubscribe. So this afternoon, we are using Zoom. I'm sure um, we're all experts at using Zoom at this point uh, during the COVID crisis, but just wanted to highlight for those of you who may be new to Zoom as a technology, there is a control panel running across the bottom of your screen, and uh, this slide kind of points to the chat box. So feel free to uh, pop your questions into chat, or because we are a group of 17 at this point, um, still small enough for you, you want to unmute yourself, just look for the icon that looks like a microphone, uh, unmute yourself, click on it to unmute, you can, you can ask your question out to the group. Okay, so it's the recap, candid.org is your main uh, website to use when you're just getting to know the work of my organization. And you'll be going to candid.org to take a deep dive into all the ways that nonprofits work with our data. So um, I like to recommend that as an exercise, if you are new to Candid, go to candid.org, C-A-N-D-I-D.org, click on things you can do and go through each of these areas. So nonprofits, academics, the general public, reporters, grant makers, uh, people who are interested in starting nonprofits will come to candid.org to um, add our resources to research nonprofit organizations. And many donors are using our um, products, our websites these days to actually verify that um, the group that is asking them for a grant is a nonprofit organization. So research and verification of your nonprofit tax status is one of the major ways the public uses our work. Uh, definitely this class falls under the rubric of resources available to you to help you improve the work of your nonprofit through either training, through updating your guides to our profile, here's the funding information network. Um, telling your story and using data is also um, two of the key points that uh, nonprofits are working with our data. Now, we are also working with databases today. And to help you find funding, you have to have somebody on your team who has uh, some degree of 
uh, uh, has, has an affinity. Somebody on your team should be developing research skills, working with database products to help your organization find funding. In the context of today's class, we're talking about foundation directory online, which is actually uh, could be seen as multiple databases, but there is a free tool that you can use literally 24 by seven on our website, candid.org. And that tool is called FDO Quick Start, Foundation Directory Online Quick Start. That is a tool that is going to allow you to create lists of foundations based on geography or based on what type of foundation you're looking for. Um, Quick Start will give you a very, very small, uh, concise profile of the funder, but it does not replace your use of the Foundation Directory Online professional product or the essential product when it comes to actual prospect research, fundraising research in this field. But because it is available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week through candid.org, um, yeah, you really do want to remember that it is there on our main website under the link Find Funding. Now, that COVID-19 pop-up page I mentioned, you're going to get there by going to candid.org, and then you'll click on Explore Issues. This is an area of our main website where you can take a look at all of the unique web portals that Candid is creating. Um, earlier this year, uh, we created a new website or web portal called Philanthropy India. And that website has a very specific purpose, which is to allow you to get a deep dive into how philanthropy works in the country of India. So there are many other research tools and research reports that we've placed on that platform, but that's just one example of the many, many different types of web portals that Candid is creating. So to get to the COVID-19 pop-up page, again, you go to candid.org, click on explore issues, you'll see an alphabetical list of websites and then click on the COVID-19 pop-up page. Also under explore issues for the academics in the group today, we have Issue Lab, which is a great place to go to online where you will find um, research reports from foundations, from social sector groups. Um, feel free to read the introductory piece on Issue Lab. And if you are working for research organizations, by all means, um, think about adding your research to Issue Lab. Um, it's a great, cool library that is available to you online that captures the great literature of our field. Now, when you need to self-educate yourself, self-train yourself to be a fundraiser or to be a better grant maker, you will be using Candid Learning. So we are talking about database products here, but database tools do not exist in a vacuum. You need um, places you can go, whether they're libraries or online websites or colleges and universities, research centers, where you can go to learn about the field of philanthropy, where you can go to learn about nonprofits and how to manage them. And that is where the website Candid Learning comes in. So the URL is literally the word learning.candid, C-A-N-D-I-D dot O-R-G. And you're going to be going to this website to look for training uh, to build your skills in nonprofit management, as well as your philanthropic skills to be a better grant maker. You're going to remember to go to Candid Learning when you have to find research tools that nonprofit organizations and foundations use. And you will definitely remember to go to Candid Learning when you have to connect to Candid's online librarians and start having conversations with us to um, further deepen your nonprofit skill set. So we do have online librarians who are available to assist you with your questions Monday through Friday from about 9.30 a.m. Eastern time until 5 p.m. Eastern time. And outside of those live chat hours, you can still go to the Ask Us. Here's the Ask Us link on the Candid Learning website. You're still gonna be going here to um, enter your question. And when we get back into the office, the next work day at nine, we start responding to questions that came in overnight or over the weekends. And we have, um, actually we do get a tremendous number of questions, not only from the United States, but we have questions coming in in multiple languages uh, from communities outside of our borders. So it is a very popular service, but please remember to use the Ask Us feature when you need help. When you are on Foundation Directory Online conducting your research, 
you will see that we've built a link into the database tools so that you can just click, um, it's called chat now, you can click chat now and be connected straight out of the database tool to our online librarians. Now, just a quick note here, when you're on Candid Learning, um, if you're starting a nonprofit organization this year, all of the startup resources have been gathered for you right here in the nonprofit startup resource area. Um, we're gonna cover you for starting a nonprofit in, in any state or American territory. So we're in West Virginia today. So if you were gonna start a nonprofit in West Virginia or in Ohio, because we're also in Ohio today, you would click on the nonprofit startup resources. Maybe you have some time to take our 75 question uh, diagnostic tool to kind of test your knowledge about starting a nonprofit. But um, you would then, next step, you're gonna click on the icon that looks like the state of West Virginia and all of the technical tools that you need to start a nonprofit in the state of Virginia would then pop up on your screen. Uh, you can borrow eBooks from us. This is a free, program that Candid operates, our ebook program, very narrowly focuses in on fundraising textbooks, topics of concern to nonprofits and nonprofit management textbooks, and a lot of grant maker guides can also be found in the borrow ebooks. And again, it is a free program. Uh, we do have a collaboration hub. So there are 650 successful nonprofit collaboration case studies. I definitely encourage you to use the Collaboration Hub if you have to review um, how nonprofits collaborate and work with each other. I want a case study view on that before you start actually um, kind of uh, outlining your own collaboration. All right, so the database tool, Foundation Directory Online. I have the acronym, the three letters, FDO, on the screen in front of you. Um, they are here because occasionally, instead of me saying foundation directory or foundation directory online, I might call it FDO. So just to be aware, when we're talking about this funding database this afternoon, uh, it will be referred to as foundation directory online. Sometimes it's referred to as FDO. And uh, later this year, we may change the name of it to you know shorten it, make it just foundation directory. Um, and again, it is a fundraising database tool that has multiple components. So we covered this, but I do need to recap it with you, particularly for those of you who are within commuting distance of the Parkersburg area of West Virginia. So on site, inside of the Emerson branch of the Parkersburg and Wood County Public Library System in West Virginia, uh, that particular branch is providing its public with absolutely free of charge. Uh, they provide the public with foundation directory professional. It's the highest level of access to our funding database that we are providing the public with. There is a second database inside of the Emerson branch that is known as grants to individuals. You will be using the grants to individuals database if you are specifically looking for a private foundation to cut a grant check to you, that's a, literally a check with your name on it. And again, the main users of this product, Grants to Individuals Online, do tend to be students looking for scholarships, um, artists looking for grants for their art, and that does include the filmmakers out there, and social workers use it to see if they can identify a foundation who will give like a, a charity check to a family or an individual in need. And all of the grant maker profiles that you find in the Grants to Individuals Online database are also folded into the Foundation Directory professional product. So the professional level edition of our database is a really versatile tool. Today, most of us are using it to identify grants to support our work as nonprofit organizations, both here in America and abroad. Uh, but you can also use Foundation Directory Online Professional, you know, if you um, are looking for a grant to yourself as an individual. Now, because we are still in many parts of the country, still, um, actually the whole country is still in the COVID-19 crisis, uh, we're very fortunate in the uh, Parkersburg area because your library systems have reopened and the public can actually walk inside the library and take advantage 
of all of the wonderful research tools and um, training programs that public libraries offer to their communities. Um, should you need access to a funding database from the comfort and safety of your home, please remember that the Parkersburg and Wood County Public Library System is offering you remote access to a database tool called Foundation Directory Essential. This is a smaller, more concise version of the professional level edition, but you can sign up through the library to get a 24 hour day pass to this tool once a month. And uh, the library system will continue to provide remote access to Foundation Directory Online through the end of this year. So we do have some wonderful research opportunities available to you. Now, if you're gonna do all of your research at home and not visit a public library this year, uh, please just remember between those 24 hour day passes that uh, you can have once every 30 days, that's once a month, what you're going to be researching using as a research tool from home is the foundation directory quick start product, um, which is just please just remember it's there it's available to you literally 24 hours a day on our website so. Um, I'm talking about foundation directory online this afternoon, but you can see that database does feed into four different products little recap right now the professional level edition. 238,000 Grantmaker profiles. It's gonna cover you for Grantmakers based in the United States and it covers you for Grantmakers um, who are outside of our uh, geographic area here in the United States. So it is a global, it is an international database. It not only allows you to search through full complete profiles of these 238,000 active Grantmakers, which by the way, does include corporate America. Um, professional will give you descriptions of each grant that these grant makers have paid out. It goes back to 2003 and it's current through 2021. So you get the grant descriptions as well as the full profiles when you use the professional level edition. And it will also identify who is getting the grant in your area. So um, that's really important to know the recipients of the grants because you're the nonprofit specialist in your particular type of activity. So if you know who's getting grants for um, subjects that you're working in, um, that can really help you uh, uh, go through your prospect list of funders much more quickly. Now, grants to individuals, again, I mentioned that's a smaller database. It's got the 10,000 foundations in it. So these are 10,000 US funders who consistently are cutting their grant checks to us as individuals. So big difference between 238,000 active grant makers and 10,000. And again, these 10,000 profiles in the Grants to Individuals Online database, you will very likely find them, they have been folded into the 238,000 active funders. So the professional level edition is, is really comprehensive. And it does include donor advised funds and the corporate funders. It also, by the way, includes grants from the US government. So if you asked yourself, which institution in the United States has the most amount of money available to support our growing nonprofit community in the US, it would always be the federal government. So again, another plus for using Foundation Directory Professional inside of the Emerson branch of the Parkersburg and Wood County Public Library is because it is a product that not only gives you the private funding, the international funding, it's gonna tell you what the US government is doing at this at the federal agency level with grants. And of course it tells you who received the grant, it gives you a grant description. Now again, on the screen in front of you, if you're going to do this type of fundraising research from home this year, you'll be using Foundation Directory Essential, which is a 24 hour day pass that you sign up for once a month, it is free. And the Essential level version of our database um, actually does have uh, quite a few funders in it, but you know, think of it as focusing on these, this core group of 110,000 uh, plus US funders. So, you know, in a state like West Virginia and Ohio, most of your prospects, uh, you can be searching FD Essential from home and put together a pretty good prospect 
um, list of funders and corporations. And again, a plug here for the Quick Start product that is available to you on candid.org. I think at this point, Quick Start has uh, possibly over 110,000 American foundations in it, but you can only search through them on Quick Start by uh, where the foundation is located. Like we could literally do a nice list of foundations in Parkersburg, West Virginia. Uh, and it will give you a very, very brief profile of them. So you really do want to be using for um, you know, good professional quality fundraising research purposes, you want to be working with the foundation directory essential, and if possible, always conduct your searches off of the professional based tool. So, you know, the other plug here for using FDO essential at home, if you can build a degree of, um, like if you can build your comfort level working your searches off of the essential level edition while you're at home. By the time you get into the Parkersburg and Wood County Public Library to work with the professional level edition, you'll be able to use the professional level edition a lot. Uh, you know, it's just going to come to you a lot more easily. The search mechanisms, the search platforms are the same for all three of these products. Um, so we do try to make things, um, you know, easier for you. And by the way, our databases are updated every day. That's that we update that seven days a week. It doesn't mean I'm updating all 238,000 profiles every single day of the week, but we're always adding data into the database. So um, when, by the way, just going back a screen, when I started 2021, Foundation Directory Online Professional had less than 238,000 grant makers. I think I might have started the year with like 235,000 active grant makers. So uh, to me, one of the wonderful things about you working with professional um, is that it just grows larger um, every quarter and actually does grow larger every month in terms of the number of grant makers that it allows you to um, research. And, you know, some people are coming at the research for academic purposes. They just want to see philanthropy's landscape or philanthropy's response to an issue in their geographic area, or they want to see how philanthropy funds certain population groups. But if you are fundraising for a nonprofit organization and you're thinking of building a fundraising stream of private foundation grants to support your work, um, these tools are excellent research tools to begin developing, um, you know, a skill with a skill in terms of using them. So your bibliography um, that we'll be sending you is, is going to give you the links to some specialty tools that we've already covered. By the way, Foundation Directory Online is such a popular research tool, it actually has its own blog. So I put the link to the blog in there. Little reminder here about working with learning.candid.org. That is the Candid Learning website. And um, there are many, many user tutorials for Foundation Directory Online available to you on YouTube. In fact, um, the Foundation Directory Online product is so popular, it has its own YouTube channel. Um, that's where I would recommend you go to watch like a four or five minute user tutorial before you start running your searches. And again, we have a nice reminder here um to um, visit your library in Parkersburg, West Virginia. In particular, it is the Emerson branch that has Foundation Directory Professional and grants to individuals online. We're not spending time today talking about guidestar.org, but you really do need to look at this website. It is a candid website. And this is your go-to website when you need to research or find a nonprofit organization based here in the United States. So if you are representing a nonprofit today, best thing you can do this year is to start looking at guidestar.org. I would recommend you have somebody, one of your employees, claim your nonprofit profile on Guidestar, update it, meaning add data. You can add your own data to the Guidestar nonprofit profile. And in that way, you, you know, you're going to tell your you're going to tell your nonprofit story more accurately. Um, and if you add enough data, you can uh, get a GuideStar seal of transparency. Now, Candid as an organization does have our own YouTube channel, and that's where you're going to go to find recordings of all sorts of training events that we have. Again, you have the link here to where you can go to find FDO Quick Start, Foundation Directory Online Quick Start, and the Find Us tool is here to find a funding information network partner um, in your area of the United States. Uh, for the data nerds, for the librarians on the call, 
if you are wondering what the definitions of are of any term, phrase, population group that you see when you're searching for funding in Foundation Directory Online, um, we have an immense taxonomy that supports this database tool. We call it the philanthropy classification system. I've got the URL up on the screen in front of you, taxonomy.candid.org. You can go to that website and actually look up the definitions of what we mean uh, by the particular population group served. Um, there are many, many support strategies that grant makers use to help us as nonprofits. All of the definitions for those support strategies would be found on the Philanthropy Classification System Taxonomy's website. And, you know, usually when we're looking for money, everybody thinks uh, cash, right? You want a cash grant. But there are many other types of transactions that foundations can engage with us on. And you would remember, if you're not sure about definitions, like if you don't uh, know what a pro program related investment is, or you don't know what we mean by matching grants, you're gonna remember there is a taxonomy that you can go to that's up there on the internet um, to pull the definition. So the backend classification system uh, that supports the foundation directory as a database, you're gonna remember it's got its own website, taxonomy.candid.org. And of course, from like an AI, from a programmer viewpoint, um, you know, we do train our software to code the grants automatically these days. The taxonomy is what our data scientists use uh, to describe grants. Okay, so good. So we've already covered this, but now I'm just going to take a few moments here to walk you through the steps of how you're going to be working with the Parkersburg and Wood County Public Library to register for your own free 24 hour day pass. And then we're gonna, after that, we're gonna totally focus on working with the professional level edition. So um, in the beginning of the presentation, gave you a screenshot of the Parkersburg and Wood County Public Library Systems specialized area of their website where they're promoting their grants collection. Here's the URL repeated for you. And you're gonna go to this URL when you want to get a free 24 hour day pass to use Foundation Directory Essential at home. Remember, Essential provides you with the ability to sift and search through um, over 110,000 uh, US foundations. And you can download the full profiles as well. Since I do a lot of downloading from the Essential product, since I only get it for 24 hours once a month. Okay. So if you want that 24-hour day pass, which again is free, by the way, um, another huge thank you and show of gratitude towards the um, administrators and staff at the Parkersburg and Wood County Public Library System. Even the essential level version of Foundation Directory Online is a fee-based subscription product. I mean, professional and the other database grants to individuals online are definitely what we call fee-based subscription products. When you work with your local public library, when you're working with your local uh, funding information network partner, they are actually um, providing you with free public access to these resources. So um, it is saving you money by working with your public library system. So this 24 hour day pass, you can sign up for it through Parkersburg and Wood once every 30 days. That's about once every month. And the passwords that you set up with Candid to access this, just want you to remember that your uh, username, your password is definitely tied into the email that you provide Candid with. And it is also tied into the way you spell your first name and last name. So in that definitely do try to remember what email address you're giving us as well as you know, your first name and last name. So there's that link again. You're going to go to that link. You're going to remember that you can save your searches. You can save your search strategies for the next month when you sign into your account. Uh, no, and you can save your research on this particular system, FD Essential, Foundation Directory Essential. Uh, there is a My FDO area where you can save your research. Nobody else in the world can look at what you're researching. 
it's just saved in that area for when you sign up to use your password the following month. So I mentioned when I work with Essential, when I'm at home, I download the full profiles. I do a lot of downloading from it because these profiles, if you are printing them out at home, can print out easily to 10 pages. So I download them because I want to read them, read the research that Candid provided me with. I want to read them um, after my 24-hour day pass has expired. So you can download full profiles by, you know, one at a time or by selecting them 10 at a time. And I also like to work with lists of funders. I also like to work in Excel at home. So if you are um, you want to download lists, you just remember you can download the list as a PDF file, or you can download the list in Excel. And you can literally download the names of funders in your prospect uh, list about 100 at a time. So you know, again, it is a 24-hour day pass, but during that, uh, during the, and, and then I doubt anybody's actually going to be using it for 24 hours straight. When I'm on my day pass, you know, I might do two hours one afternoon and an hour, hour and a half the next day. But I, again, I do recommend downloading from it. So when you're on the Parkersburg Wood County Public Library and you click on their link to Foundation Directory Essential from home, you know, the remote access, this screen will pop up. You'll pop put your Yahoo account in here. You're gonna put your Gmail account in here and then you're gonna click next. So I put a Yahoo account in and I click next. The next screen you see tells you that you just submitted uh, a request for your 24 hour pass. And it tells you who the link was sent to. So in this case, it was sent to my Yahoo account. I'm gonna open up uh, my Yahoo email box and in the screen that I have that you're looking at now, it uh, happens to be an account that I signed up for through the Red Bank Public Library, which is uh, far, far away from West Virginia. It's in New Jersey, but it does say, um, click on this link in blue to continue with the registration. This link is valid for 30 minutes. So we're not gonna waste time. We're just gonna click this link in blue and start with the registration process. So you'll need to create a password, confirm the password, um, you'll have to give us your first name, last name. And again, remember your FD Essential 24 hour day pass account, which actually you can use once a month, um, is connected to your email that you provide us with. It's connected to exactly how you spell your first name and last name. And, uh, you know, do please try to remember your password. Uh, you can reset it by all means, like most systems, you can reset it. But, um, you know, it's a, more, a little more convenient to you if you remember your password from month to month. Now, if you don't want to tell us your organization's name, just type in uh, NA, not available in that box. We do require that you tell us what country of the world you're using this 24-hour day pass from. Most of our users right now are from the United States. If you don't want to tell me whether or not you're an arts and culture researcher or you're researching business development or cancer research or uh, technology, you don't have to tell us where it says field of interest, just pick you for unclassified. And EIN is the acronym for employer identification number. It's there, but it is not required. I actually have met very few nonprofit managers who off the top of their head can remember the employer identification number that the IRS assigned them. Now, um, as you might do with many, many database systems, uh, in order for you to use this, you have to read the terms and conditions and agree to them. So there are two little squares at the bottom of your registration page. You will need to agree to the terms and conditions of using Foundation Directory Essential from home, but you by all means do not have to say, yes, I'd like Candid to send me periodic emails. You can leave that blank. After you fill this out, you're ready to get your day pass, and you're just going to click where it says in orange here, go to Foundation Directory Essential, click it, the database will then open up on your screen at home. Now, if anybody says to you, well, what database are you using? Look in the upper left-hand corner and read this. It says Foundation Directory Online Essential. Um, you see where it says Crystal Husky up here, Crystal Husk? And again, this is Crystal's private FDO essential account. Crystal is going to be saving her research or her search strategies in this area that says my FDO. 
you know, Crystal can even upload one of her proposals to this area, my FDO. I, I actually haven't done that yet with my proposals, but um, her research will be saved month to month. If Krista wants and needs help from the online librarian, she can click chat, upper right-hand corner where it says chat, and this will connect her to Candid's online librarians. Also in the lower right-hand corner, it does say chat with an expert. This is a great reminder that, uh, yeah, I've got an online librarian working right now who I can connect to. So by the way, when you're talking to our candid online librarian saying, oh, I'm having trouble working with the database, I don't understand what this means. One of the first questions I'm gonna ask you if I'm the online librarian is, what database are you using? Look at the upper left-hand corner and then you're just gonna read that out to me. And then I pull this up on my laptop. So um, most important thing about this essential level edition, remember I said it was a 24 hour day pass. So in the, you're always going to see a bright purple bar that starts counting down from 24 hours. So, you know, I can, where it says crystal husk, I can log out and go to lunch. I can log out, help the kids with their homework, and then I can log back in uh, when I'm done and I'll still be an FDO essential. But this will always tell me how much more time I have left. Uh, so that's a major difference here. And again, your research is private. Nobody's looking at your research from month to month. If you're brand new to FDO Essential, take five minutes and click through this welcome tour. We enhanced it in 2021. And um, it's really going to take you through each step of all of these search ways you can search the system here. But as we work with professional in a few minutes, um, when you search on the professional level edition, when you search on the essential level edition, when you search using grants to individuals, remember that smaller database that's in the Emerson branch? Um, the search mechanisms are the same. You have this open-ended box. Just type a sentence in there telling the software what you need grant support for. We give you some examples, which are a little bit leading, but they're really good examples. LA School in New York City, Animal Shelter in Portland, Maine, Food Pantry in Dallas, um, Orphanage in Nepal, Cancer Research Center in Israel. Um, these are short, sweet, they're concise, and they always have kind of a subject or a topic that you need money for, as well as a geographic area. Always remember to think about geography when you're looking for grant makers who are going to fund you. Chances are geography that's the area where your project is taking place, um, is, is also really important to you. So when you're typing your sentences in here, describing to the software what you need grant support for, um, you know, always use some kind of ge ge geographic terminology here. By the way, we are in the United States today, but you know, we could be in the United States, but maybe our project is taking place um, in Tokyo which I think the Olympics starts tomorrow, Tokyo, Japan. You can actually, when it comes to geography, uh, put in, you know, work with the American geographic terms or, you know, just tell the computer you need money for a grant in Venezuela. And that will tell the software to look for grant makers who've actually invested grants in that city, town, village, part of the country, part of the world. Um, the advanced search features are over here. You can like just keep clicking on this. There are two layers of advanced search and filters that you can use with professional and the essential level edition. Um, but you know, don't don't use them until you've learned how to kind of work with the open-ended search functionality here. Of course, if you're really fortunate, somebody has given you the name of a foundation like. Uh, Oh, the Riccio Foundation, Mr. Barnes and Noble, they support X, Y, and Z. So if you have the name of the funder, you could just click search by organization and pop the name in. Uh, you know, maybe you're looking for grants based on uh, like the five museums that do what your museum does. Like maybe I need to put together a list of grants that were paid out to the King Manor Museum in Jamaica, New York. I can also work with search by organization. This will not only work for um, foundations, it also works for the nonprofit recipients. And of course, people are, you know, this is philanthropy. People are really, really important. You can actually use search by person. That's gonna allow you to see if the individual that you pop in here is a donor to a foundation or sits on the board or like is a program officer at a foundation. So lots of different ways you can 
kind of use professional and essential. As a quick snapshot of the My FDO area of the essential level edition. Now, the type of research I'm likely to save there is like descriptions of the projects I'm working on. Sometimes I make notes of my foundations, whether they're foundations or corporations who are my prospects. I actually haven't been brave enough to upload my grant proposals to this. Contacts, you know, that's got a neat file here where you can like collect your contacts. Tasks, that's like a to-do list. So, you know, it's, uh, this product has been enhanced this year for the folks who are using the 24 hour day passes. And again, um, your research is not looked at by the general public. It's just waiting there for you to work with next, next month. Um, by the way, uh, when you're using professional, when you're using the essential level edition, for the new people out there who, um, these database tools make it much easier for us to develop a list of 100 or 200 prospects who we think might fund our project. Uh, not so, and it's easy enough for most of us to read through 200 profiles, not so easy after you've assessed each profile for you to determine which funders out of your group of, let's say, 100 that you found, not so easy to, to determine who's an A prospect and who's a C prospect. So when you're working with FDO professional and FDO essential, remember that connected to each of these grant maker profiles, you have an assessment tool that you can, um, just a, the computer, will, the software will ask you questions about, uh, uh, about how you're reading through the profile. Those questions will make you decide for yourself whether or not you're eligible for a grant, do they fund the subjects you're working on, do they fund in the areas that you're working in, population group serve? And you can see at the end of the assessment, the software will make you um, decide if uh, when, after you've read the profile, if it's an A prospect or a C prospect. So, you know, that's something to consider as well. It's a big plus for using Foundation Directory Professional. Now, this is a screenshot of what that Foundation Directory Online Quick Start product will look like. Remember, the Quick Start database is available on candid.org for you to use 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It allows you to search for US foundations based on where they're located or what type of foundation. So you can use Quick Start at home between your 24 hour day passes. And the second your 24 hour day pass expires, that purple bar turns into this bright orange bar that says my day pass expired. Um, that's a good reminder, but this layout of the color scheme is different from essential, but the layout of the landing page is very, very similar for all of our database products. This is a screenshot um, so that you can kind of get a sense of how the quick start product looks, you know, works differently from essential. When you're in quick start, which again is available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can only search for grant makers, it says here recipient as well, based on the location or the type that you're looking for. So it is, um, it's a very nifty, it's a quick tool. The, um, I wouldn't even call them profiles. They're really just really very brief descriptions of funders. Um, but, but, you know, it can help you out between day passes. Now, I always recommend, however, that you work with the professional level edition. And this is the three reasons we work with many, many public libraries. Again, that professional level edition comes with a lot of bells and whistles that you can't actually get to from home. It is a subscription product that most of us, if I'm working for a small or nonprofit organization, that you know, doesn't spend a lot of hours every week looking for foundation and corporate support. Um, it is well worth a trip to your local library to um, you know, use, this, use their version of it inside the library. It of course downloads beautifully. You can email your search results to your colleagues back in the office. Um, so, and, and it costs all it takes is for you to get one grant funded and that literally pays for your gasoline. It pays for the time that you would have spent uh, making a visit to the local library. Plus, in the Parkersburg and Wood County Public Library, guess what? You have um, a staff. You have uh, librarians who actually take training 
and how to use this database product. So you have real people you could talk to who presumably, you know, because they're on the ground in the Parkersburg, uh, West Virginia area, they're more likely to have a much better understanding of nonprofit needs in, in the Parkersburg, you know, West Virginia area than I would have kind of trying to help you from Brooklyn, New York. But at any rate, here we go, Foundation Director Professional. I'm gonna just quickly just check the chat. Okay, good, good, good. Um, don't worry about the recordings. Remember you have a YouTube copy of the slides. Um, oh, good. So Reed is giving a Gmail address. Um, all right, so if we need to email Reed, uh, yeah, we've got Reed's contact information. All right, so Foundation Director and I think you have a sense of what the database product can do right now. When you're using it, we always say, deep breath, take three minutes, take five minutes. If you have a golf pencil at home, pencil and paper, or do it on your laptop. Um, try to write down what you need money for before you dive into Foundation Directory Online. Uh, your searches will work much better for you if you have a clear picture of what you need grant support for. So you know, think, think about it because you've got to set up a search to extract the better prospects from this database. And if you're using professional, you're really searching through two, over 200,000 grant makers. So today our examples are going to assume that all of us on the call at one point in our careers need to find foundation and corporate support for a project that we are working on. So think project support. That's one of the better ways to work with Foundation Directory Online. And you always want to keep in the back of your head, how do I access Foundation Directory Online? Of course, I love it when you pull out a credit card and subscribe to it. Um, but you know what, if we're not at that point in our research needs yet, where you have to subscribe to your own version of FDO Pro, uh, then you're going to work with the local funding information network partner and use it on site inside the library or you know, work with them and sign up for those 24 hour day passes. So there's always help for working with Foundation Directory Online. So um, you know, if we were in the room together today, we'd have a conversation about how you've been finding your grants up to this point. Uh, yeah, and it's true. Some people always tell me they use Google and they find grants. Others tell me they subscribe to emails that give them RFPs, RFP is the acronym for Request for Proposals. This is a situation where you have a private foundation that publicizes uh, you know, to the community. They are looking for you to apply for specific grants. So they create a request for proposals. Now, if you're a candid.org fan, if you've been on our main website, cand.org, you are likely to come across a news service we have called Philanthropy News Digest, um, which is where we have a team that summarizes philanthropy news for you pretty much daily. That Philanthropy News Digest newsletter has a special section called RFPs, Requests for Proposals, where we have grant makers who, who are sending Philanthropy News Digest, their requests for proposals, and we post them on it. So some people find grants because they subscribe to newsletters that get them to the RFPs. When you're working with Foundation Directory Online, if a grant maker has a current RFP, that profile is going to tell you and it'll give you the link to where you can read the full request for proposal. And that's gonna enhance your interpretation of the grant maker profile that you find. Some people use guidestar.org, don't recommend that. Guidestar.org gives you profiles of every single nonprofit in America. Not that it's, it's a fantastic tool, but Foundation Directory and Online Professional is a much better tool to use if you're looking to develop a, a prospect list of foundations, corporations, other types of grant makers that might support you. Um, I ran you through some of these numbers earlier today. Truth of the matter is those numbers change on a month to month basis because we're always updating the database. Uh, but you know, every year we're adding uh, over 4 million grant descriptions to this product. So when you do your searches, you're not only searching through the profiles that we create 
for these 238,000 plus grant makers, you're searching through the descriptions of 4 million grants that we add every year. And you're also searching through the descriptions of all the past grants that we have in the system. So um, it's got very detailed profiles of funders, grant and the recipients, as well as corporations that are in the system. With every one of these 238,000 grant maker records, we also, in addition to the text, the, the, the report that we write, we're gonna give you visualizations that we call maps and charts that help you get a quick snapshot of the last five years of a grant maker's work. So now we always wanna know what they've done recently and the maps and charts will you know, help you get up to speed really, really quickly. And again, it's updated daily. Now I go to this part of candid.org, fconline.foundationcenter.org. I go here once a month to just double check the counts. And again, you know, if you ever have to ask yourself, why are you using a database uh, research tool uh, to look for foundations to fund your work? You're gonna do that because when we look at US foundations, and by the way, numbers wise, I think that there's a little over, there's a slightly more than 121,000 active US private foundations, you know, actively giving out grants today. But again, the database says over 238,000 funders. So it's got more than just US based private foundations. But when we look at the US foundations, you know, consistently 90% of them don't have websites. So, um, you know, if you don't have a great friend who's constantly feeding you prospects, uh, these database products can help any sized organization get up to speed fairly quickly in terms of which funders you might be eligible to apply for. So I always go here once a month to this area and, and my eye is checking these numbers because I wanna know month to month, quarter to quarter, how large the Foundation Directory Online Professional Database is given. Now we craft these great profiles. So we're using over 30 information sources to create the information that you're reading through and analyzing. You know, websites, annual reports. Uh, some grant makers actually send us their grants um, in Excel sheets. So that's, that's great when foundations will send us their uh, work uh, without us having to wait for a tax return to come through. Um, so there are other 30 plus data sources that go into this. When you're identifying your needs, remember I said, you can take three minutes, take five minutes, jot down on paper, visualize to yourself, what do you need grant support for? Because you have to type a sentence into Foundation Directory Online telling the software what you need grant support for. Um, three basic questions. You know, what population group are you serving? Is it a children and youth project? Is it seniors? Is it um, uh, boys? Is it girls? Is it Roman Catholics in your area? Who are you serving? Is it people with learning disabilities? Is it people with mental disabilities? Um, are we serving folks who have a specific disease? Everybody's population group that they serve is a little bit different. So if you do have a specific population group, you know what? You can turn that into a computer search for funding. Where are they? This is your geographic focus. Is the work happening in West Virginia or is the work happening only in Raleigh County, West Virginia? Uh, I, need to, like, I need to know the geographic focus of the grant, which means where in the community, where in the US, where in your state, where in the world is the project taking place? Because when you use geographic focus as a search field, you're literally telling the software to only pull up a funder if they've given a grant to Parkersburg, West Virginia. Or what, what county is Parkersburg, West Virginia in? Was it Wood County or Raleigh County? Yes, Wood. Would. Or you could say, um, you know, give me a list of funders who fund arts and culture in Wood County, West Virginia. You can get really specific in terms of the geographic area you serve, or you can do like a statewide search. Now, what are you doing for them? You know what? If I'm looking for money, I really do need to know what I need the money for. Is it an after school program? Is this a Suzuki violin program? Is it a senior center? 
uh, we tried to think, bring uh, vegan lunches to the city's oldest senior center, longest running senior center. People have some very, very specific projects. So, you know, three really important questions. And then as you read through the profiles, remember we are, we are a lot of times when we use foundation directory online as a database, you're using it to find foundations and corporations and other types of grant makers who are most likely, the most likely candidates to say yes to your request for money. So you wanna be reading these profiles, always asking yourself, do I meet the requirements? Uh, is your mission or your project's goal a priority for this funder? Now, how big are the grants? You know, a lot of times what'll happen to me is my boss will say, uh, hey, Susan, I'm not looking for a foundation um, uh, or a group of foundations that will cut us grant checks in the $5,000 to $10,000 range. I need you to find me two or three foundations who have the capacity to give us grant checks between $500,000 and a million dollars. So, um, you know, always it's going to pay in the long run as you read through these profiles to kind of have a sense, what is my boss looking for? What am I looking for? Am I looking for a foundation that is going to do a zero to $10,000 grant? Or, uh, you know, were we looking for a much larger grant, like a grant that begins at a million dollars? Big difference in terms of the type of funder that's going to, you know, pop off your prospect list there. Now, you, you all should be able to tell me you have two or three organizations that are like doing what your organization does or something similar, because I always dive into these database tools and I look to see who's funding them, because then I can get ideas about who might fund me. Um, this is still a people feel, shake your board up and down, do your board members, do your volunteer leaders, do your staff members know anybody associated with this funder. Like try to get that introduction. And if you're like a development director or an executive director, um, you know, help out the other EDs, help out the other development directors. Maybe, you know, introduce your buddy at another organization to your program officer. So introductions and knowing people are still, uh, you know, really, you know, part of relationship building with the private foundation community. Um, this is what typically the landing page is going to look like for you. And again, just type a sentence in the page. Uh, in this case, I typed in healthy after school program for low income children in Atlanta, Georgia. There's my geographic area. There's my population group serving. And I tried to describe what I needed money for. Then I click search. The software is feeding back to me how it's uh, looking at my search and the advanced search feature. So it took my sentence, it just pulled up everybody who funds in child welfare, or out of school learning or health and health is pretty broad, but it's also telling me here, it's only going to pull a grant maker for me. If they've given one or more grants into Atlanta, Georgia, which happens to be in the US. So it's going health in Atlanta, out of school learning in Atlanta, child welfare in Atlanta, click search, it'll process it, it just found me over 2000 700 grant makers, full profiles, and it just described 30,000 grants that these 2,783 grant makers paid out into Atlanta, and it's also going to describe the recipients. Plus, it gives me a link to everybody's tax returns. So here's a tremendous amount of research you could do here. Now, um, what you're going to see first is it's going to sort through your prospect list. By the way, the reality is, um, I think this is great. There's over 2,700 prospects. But probably, you know, if I was, this is my search, I would redo the search so that um, I'd only be looking through a much smaller list of grant makers. But you can sort this list. You can click view all. It'll show you the funders 100 at a time. And then you can follow the instructions, by the way. See where it says export and email them. Uh, pretty much uh, very logical. But you can sort them alphabetically. You can sort them by where they're located in city. Assets and total given, that comes straight from their tax returns. By the way, if you see zero here, as we do for this US federal agency, yeah, federal agencies don't have assets, don't have total assets and total giving the way the rest of us in the nonprofit community do. So that's why it's zero. But do pay attention to the column amount funded. This I think is one of the more important columns here. The computer just did my math for me. Now, because I didn't tell the computer to limit the search to just like grants paid out from 2015 to 2021, 
this, this, these numbers are large because the computer literally went back from 2003 through 2021 to produce all of these grants, but it just added everything up. So when you see, a, is that 11.3 million or billion? Uh, this is where the software is telling you exactly how much money the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services put into the city of Atlanta for my search terms. Um, um, yeah, here's something we can get our hands on. Yeah, Community Foundation of Greater Atlanta. That's how much they money, they, in terms of their grants, put into Atlanta for this topic. So you can sort by amount funded so, funded, so you can see the grant makers who paid out the larger amount of money or you can, you know, resort that list and start with the smaller amounts first. Grant count, very, very important. These are literally the number of grant checks that this particular grant maker paid out to support that project. And then, by the way, when you click on the grant maker name, their full profile opens up. So there is a lot to be said about um, looking at the list because you not only get the name of the grant maker and where they're located and what their assets and total giving are, you're gonna get the columns headed amount funded and grant count. These tell you like uh, how many grant checks went into your geographic area and how much money they were worth. Uh, here's another picture of it. Note here, see how those grant counts drops dramatically when you start sorting them? So you might see the larger funders at the top by uh, how many grant checks they cut for your topic. Two ways to look at it, by amount funded or grant count. Now, you know, presumably your eye will focus in on you know, one or two of these, three or four of those, and you'll wanna click the blue link with the name and the profile opens up. Do pay attention when you're reading through the profiles to the application information. Read through it, because at the bottom of all of that application information, you're going to see a grayed out area that says giving limitations. So even this might not seem like a big box, but it's telling me what they don't give money for. Uh, by the way, I'm just going to point out right now, we use something called predict technology. So the software is always trying to find you prospects based on the type of search that you typed in. When I'm reading, in this case, I'm reading to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation profile, but if I clicked on other funders to consider, the software tries to pull prospects up for me. And this is in addition to the list that I created. So, you know, these profiles are getting pretty, pretty uh, unique in terms of the type of information about the grant maker that we're able to provide you with. About us is basic, but if I don't know what this funder is all about, I need to take three minutes to read through this area. Funding interests, that's what are they funded? Grants, that's going to take me to descriptions of the grants they've paid out. Financials, fairly basic. If you have to look at their tax returns, we most likely have at least 15, 20 years of their tax returns for you to evaluate. Who's who? It's exactly what it says there. List of the officers, list of the board members, list of the staff, any job openings. Now, remember I said maps and charts help you get a quick snapshot of what the funder, what the grant maker did with the last five years of their grants money. This is a screenshot of what the maps and charts do. It's going to tell you what in the last five years, what were the top topics that this group funded. Okay, and if I'm using professional, I can click on health and have that topic health broken down into much more narrower health terms. Where's the money going? So this is Bill and Melinda Gates. Looks like they put a lot of money into New York, some money into Florida, some money into California, not so much money here. But when you're using professional, you can click on those states, click on those states, and it will then open up your state by county and tell you exactly how much money in the last five years the funder has put into your state by county. How big are the grants? Very few grants in the last five years for this funder. We're in the zero to 5,000 range or the 5K to 10K range. But they had a lot of grants beginning 100K and a lot more grants beginning at 1 million. So even if I couldn't interpret the financials, just looking at this large ch chart that says so many grants at a million above in the last five years, I would say they have juice. Now, here's the link to the grant maker assessment tool. So after you read through all of the text, and if you still don't know if you're you know, if Bill and Melinda Gates is most likely to fund you, you need to take a test. 
you need to evaluate. So you're going to click, is this a good prospect? Assess this grant maker and have the software walk you through the questions. A little bit of about, by the way, when I'm reading about the funder, my eye always looks to see if there are program areas here. And this, in this case, it says six. So I definitely am going to click this and read through the six program areas because I got to figure out which program area my client or the nonprofit I'm trying to help fits into. Application, that's pretty straightforward. It's going to give you instructions right there. Communications tells you how social media savvy the funder is. How are they communicating with the general public using social media? If they're really, you know, not on Facebook, not on Twitter, if they don't have a website, which we know 90% of them don't have websites, um, this area is likely to be populated by news reports. How does the funder appear in the news? So, you know, these are some of the unique parts of those grant maker profiles. And again, you always have to have a good sentence, a couple of good sentences that you're popping in there. Search by your organization, fairly straightforward. If you're lucky enough to have somebody tell you, um, go look for a grant from the XYZ funder. Now, I'm going to just going to stop my screen share right now. Say hi to everybody. I'm going to go kind of break up the class just a little bit. I'm going to take, we're going to take a little pause. I'm going to walk you through the handouts. So we're going to send you, and we should all be looking at a handout that says candidate population terms. This is a 12 page handout, but remember I showed you that slide for taxonomy.candid.org. Well, you know, when you're using this product, you could take a look at the um, handouts we're sending you, just scan them. There are so many different ways to describe population groups in America today that nonprofit organizations serve. If we had to describe your work by subject, take a look at these subject terms. Nothing here is not familiar to you, but you can see how it gets fairly, fairly detailed when we have to describe what we need money for. I mean, you could say economic development, but you know, is it better to say job counseling? So this is a, a good exercise for beginners of the database, to, and it's a 12 pager. Then we have, this one's cool because you can download this and just type in your notes here. It's supposed to use an adult pencil. This is called the Foundation Directory Online Research Worksheet. And you can type into these terms. Try to describe your project, you know, try to figure out how much it's gonna cost. Try to, after you have the project description here, you know, let's jot down some subject areas because you could take these terms and pop them into the software. Any population group, geographic focus, which is where is the money being used? What do you need? Um, then there's just a really quick sheet that reminds you when you're searching, think about these terms. All right, so you have three worksheets. And what I'm going to do now is try to do a live search in the last... Uh, five or six minutes. So uh, just, all right, we're on foundation directory. Everybody shout it out, professional. This looks familiar to you. We're live right now on the database. And I hope, hopefully I don't have to log back in. So in my subscription, you can see I had saved some of my searches. I was trying to help uh, some nonprofits in Charles County, Maryland and Prince Frederick look for money. So you can see some of my saved searches there. I can just click them and the search will pop up and I can rerun it. I'm scrolling through the whole page. We have some RFPs that are really current. Oh, that's today. I missed the deadline for the quantum benchmarking RFP from the US Department of Defense. Um, C. Z. Smith Reynolds Foundation. I kind of you know, almost missed it. I guess I have until midnight tonight if I wanted to uh, apply for this RFP. So now you have RFPs, you have links to the YouTube channel for Foundation Directory Online, or I could just watch the user tutorials. And here's the blog. Now, in this case, on this particular FDO subscription, when I filled out my form, I said I was from New York. So where it says Foundation Funding in All Topics, it'll land on New York, but I can, kind of change this to any other state for sure. So when you're working with your foundation directory essential and foundation directory professional, 
the most important part of the database is right here, but do work that scroll bar down so you could see everything else on your landing page. By the way, here's my FDO. There's the online librarian working right now as chat or chat with an expert in the lower right hand corner. And you're going to tell the computer what you need money for. And it could be It could be, well, we know Susan can't spell, but let's see. Sometimes I, I get really lucky and the computer spells for me. But here's, here's a really basic search, arts and culture in West Virginia. I'm gonna keep the federal government in there. I'm waiting for this. So I have, based on the way I type the sentence in, arts and culture in West Virginia, the software just put together all the arts and culture funders and they, it found me 473 prospects. So when I look through these profiles, they are here, these grant makers are here because they popped money into West Virginia for arts and culture. There's pretty, that's a broad search. But my pool, 473 grant makers, I've got over 3,000 grant descriptions and 561 recipients here. Um, but all right, who do you think put the most amount of money into West Virginia for arts and culture? So I'm clicking on amount funded to just resorted the list. And here we go. Well, this funder is based in Pittsburgh, but they put $12.9 million into the state of West Virginia for arts and culture and, and 111 grant checks were cut. So you can, if you're using professional, just click that 111. And now you're going to see a grants list here. It's kind of Okay, good, it finally showed up. So I can now, I can see all, I can actually read through all 111 of these grants paid into West Virginia from this funder. I can see who received it. I can see where the recipient is located in West Virginia. By the way, uh, you might say this is redundant where it says recipient country, but this is an international database, it's global. so. You know, it could, you know, it's, it's got other parts of the world in it. That's why we've got recipient country. And furthermore, the software is telling me what subject that grant was for. So, you know, we have this Ogle Bay Institute. Oh, in Wheeling. That's what, Northern, Northern West Virginia. By the way, they have a silver seal of transparency on guidestar.org. So already I know I'm dealing with a really kind of a sophisticated nonprofit here. They claimed their guidestar.org profile. They added enough data for the public to read to obtain a silver guidestar seal of transparency. Now in 2019, they got 186,000 for some kind of K to 12 art grant. What does $186,000 get them? Okay, expansion of a cross-cultural program that teams resident artists with classroom teachers and engages students in public art projects over two years. But you know, it's hundred that's that's a lot of work you can get done with one check for 186,000. Here's the funder. And we're also telling you right here, uh, they're in Pittsburgh, we're telling you what counties they fund, what's the subject of this grant, what population groups, and it's cash, which is you know great. It's a program support grant. So, you know, if you liked this, you'd probably click on the grant maker name to start reading through the description. That's how you're working with this. By the way, it's just showing me right now how the advanced search feature um, uses. So to clear that, and let's let's dive straight into the advanced search feature, just to kind of give you a sense, because I went three minutes over. Um, let's see. Okay, there's a Wood County, Ohio, but we're in a Wood County, West Virginia, right? Okay, right here. Wood County, West Virginia, we're going a little bit larger in terms of geographic area outside of Parkerburg, uh, Parkersburg. Maybe we want to see who helps, you know, children and youth in Wood County, West Virginia. Now, these bars where it says year, this database goes back to 2003. So does the Essential product. But you know, a lot of times when I'm in the advanced search features, I'll use those slider bars. And I changed 2003 into 2015, thereby telling the computer, only pull a grant maker out if it paid out a grant into Wood County, West Virginia that helped children and youth. And I'm telling the software here, I'm only looking for grants paid into this county, 2015 to 2021. 
Um, right now, I, I really, I'm not gonna look at how large those brands are, but let's just run the search. There, did you, uh, you know, there's a keyword feature there. I'm going broad here. Current 2015 to 2021, children and youth, Wood County. All right, hooray, 52 grant makers who paid out 399 grants, 106 recipients, 110 tax returns. Now, I still have my advanced search features up. So, you know, I could say, oh, it's a health grant that I'm really looking for that helped children and youth or an arts or education grant. Uh, I could put in a support strategy. I could pop a keyword in, but you know, 52 is 52. I'm gonna click view all which will show me the grant makers a hundred at a time. And I have a nice list here. I can click that empty box. It just took all 52 and I can then look for the icons. Oh, I can email them to myself or I can download them as Excel sheet or make a PDF file. If I want the full profiles, I can click them one at a time or click them 10 at a time. Now, who do we think put the most amount of money into for children and youth as a population group into Wood County, West Virginia from 2015 to 2021? All right, we have our feds in here. Ah, this is a community foundation, right? 67 grants, 2015 to 2021, totaling 1.3 mil. All right, let's pull that profile. Terrific, they have a website. You want the people who run it, click who's who. You just need a phone number, email, click contact. Here's the assessment tool. Here are my data visualizations that tell me what uh, PACF Inc. did with their grant support in the last five years. And this makes sense. There's my West Virginia. Okay, now I'm on professional. I can keep clicking the state of West Virginia and I get it down to this county level. And there, oh yeah, here we go. Wood County looks like uh, maybe a little more going into Jackson. No, Wood County got more money. The shading on my laptop is a little bit off. And I can just keep clicking on that. And I get my nice list of who in Wood County got the grant. I can export it. Or I can close that map and go back to my profile. So most of their money in the last five years went to West Virginia. And human services is the most popular topic or subject they funded in the last five years. I can keep clicking on human services to start breaking that into subcategories. And most of their grants were 5K to 10K. So if I'm approaching Parkersburg Area Community Foundation, you know, maybe I'm looking in these two ranges. Uh, probably not gonna ask them for $2,000. I'm gonna go 5K to 10K or 5K to 25K. But here are my grant descriptions. Oh, how nice. The software did my math for me again. Most common grant size for my topic, children and youth. 7,000, and these are these should be fairly current because I told the computer 2015 to 2021. Uh, funding interest, what do they fund? Here's all of the population groups they fund. Where do they put their money? What kind of foundation am I dealing with? Uh, who's who? Wow, do I know any of these 26 board members? Now, looks like we haven't gotten around to uh, connecting all of these board members to their LinkedIn account, but if you saw the LinkedIn uh, symbol next to their names, you could open up a tab with your LinkedIn account and immediately see if somebody in your LinkedIn network can introduce you to one of those board members. Um, other funders to consider, okay, didn't find any prospects for this particular search. All right, so uh, I've gone over a bit, but that was just like a quick search there. We can set up another search and pull out corporate funders who are investing in Wood County. We can see who in Wood County is getting grants from other community foundations or donor advice funds. Lots of different ways to set your search up in professional. Um, all right, uh, questions? Is, no. I'm gonna check the chat. I wanna thank you so much for staying on a little bit later, but definitely I think we've seen foundation directory um, is a very powerful research tool and can definitely customize the search to what um, your research of the day is. And definitely it's very accessible. You can get to it again on site in Parkersburg at the Parkersburg and Wood County Public Library, specifically the Emerson branch. Um, you can sign up through the library for the 24 hour day pass to FB Essential. 
And between day passes, you can use FDO Quick Start. So, you know, I encourage you to check it out. And again, um, you can ask our online librarian for help. You can ask the team at the Emerson branch at Parkersburg and Wood County Public Library for help. There's lots of ways you can get help with this. Um, don't, remember, remember the YouTube channel, watch a couple of the videos. So there is Foundation Directory Online has a YouTube channel. And there are many, many uh, other libraries who actually have put together um, database search tutorials. So um, lots of ways to learn about how to use Foundation Directory Online. But it will make much better sense to you if you actually begin working with the database. Um, so I encourage you to check it out. We just kind of looked at it very superficially this afternoon. There are definitely like advanced classes we could do on how to work your searches. Um, but there, there is a lot of good free resources out there for you to assist you in your fundraising research. And again, just remember the candid tools really do help you put together a picture of the philanthropic landscape in each of the areas uh, that we have represented uh, by our two organizations today. So thank you so much. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Dr. Elliot. Um, thank you, Susan. We really final announcements. Okay, and we'll, we'll, we'll get you those handouts. Yeah, now get everybody the slides and everything in the follow-up email. I think the only thing that I would like to add other than a thank you again to Susan and to the Parkersburg Wood County Library is just that when you get your email from me and it has an evaluation for the program attached to it, I ask that you do fill that evaluation out because I read them, every single one of them. And there's a chance for you not only to talk about how this was helpful or what, what we could do to improve, but also to tell me what you need next so that I can be responsive to your needs as I design programming going forward. So I appreciate everybody being here and uh, good luck searching for grants and I wish you all the best. Thank you again, Susan. All right, thank you. Have a lovely summer and please- Thank you, Susan. Searching goes. Tell us if you got the grant for sure. Thank you.